Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. I talk a lot about tapping into the big chi, that is the chi of the heavens and, and earth, and to be able to run that through your body mind in a way that you can use it. So you're not dependent on strictly on your own chi, your own energy, the energy that gets produced inside your skin, but you're able to tap into something much bigger. And, uh, you know, the, it comes from the idea that we are not closed systems. That is, we're not these contained little bubbles that, that are unrelated to the rest of our environment and the world and everything, but we're actually, surprise, surprise, we're actually part of something much bigger so that we have our own identity, our own agency, our own uh, sense of being as, as individuals, but we also have this connection to something much bigger. And when we, when we align our body mind in a way that that is most efficient then we we the energy the, of the big chi uh, has a tendency to run through us in uh, a higher uh, intensity than than we're uh, we are capable of it whenever we're collapsed into our own individual structure so anyway we we do that through our three pillars so that we can, first of all, use our central equilibrium to establish those contact points between heaven and earth. We align the, the spine, the hips, and, and in such a way as to find that sweet spot where we're able to attune to the, the big G. And then we, from there, we get coherent, that is we create a state of wholeness within the structure itself, our body mind. And we unkink the hose, that is we remove the impediments to the free flow of energy. So that's that's what we do in, in, in setting up the three pillars. And it's something that, that, and we start off all of our exercises that way. So we get, we have, get really familiar with that. So it becomes, um, less and less of a chore to actually establish it and to be able to really just go there instantly. And so there's that. But today I want to um, I want to go a little bit even farther outside the reservation and, um, and talk about something else for tapping into the big chi. And the one thing about the three pillars that you know is characteristic of a lot of what, what I talk about write about and, and, and teach is that it's all empirical. I can show you how to do this and, and establish uh, exercises, demonstrations, et cetera, that, to be able to really you know, confirm that something's going on here. It's, so it's not, a, it's not just a theoretical idea that that Rick comes up with, it's like, no, no, this is, this is a way of looking at the world and our relationship to it and putting it in a language which can be demonstrated and can be, we can do it reliably. But what I wanna to talk to you about now is kind of something that I don't have that relationship to. That is, I haven't figured a way to, to test this yet. And, but it's something which is, part of the, the internal, martial, internal martial arts and the internal uh, energy, uh, Chinese internal energy studies that, and Chinese medicine that makes it, it's got a rich tradition that I don't want to ignore. And even though I personally have not found a way to test it yet, it's, there's enough inherited uh, knowledge there that to be able to uh, to say, okay, there, 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 there's something there and we can put ourselves in position to discover more. 
So we're not going into it from a position of, all right, this is already proven. We're going to positions like, hey, what, what is possible here? What else is possible? And so we're going to look at it. And so what I'm talking about here is the Bagua. And the Bagua is basically the eight directions. There's, it's usually visualized as a circle and usually a square within a square inside that circle creating these points. So the, the, there's one, um, one square defines the cardinal points, which are north, south, east, west. And then there's another square, which is just turned 45 degrees inside that. That is, is then uh, the points in between. So the, uh, at the at halfway between the, the cardinal points. So we get, you know, northeast, um, southeast, um, southwest, northwest, that kind of thing. So we get those. So, but each of those corresponds to an organ. And we're going to focus primarily here on the, uh, on, on the cardinal points. And since they, you know, they relate to the seasons, they relate to Chinese medicine, there's a whole lot of, whole lot going on there. And so there's a lot of correlations there that it's, it's worth checking out. So the, uh, the four cardinal points are, relate to winter is north, east is spring, summer is south, and west is fall or autumn. And um, the winter uh, is north, and that is corresponds to kidney. The uh, spring corresponds to liver. The summer corresponds to heart. And the uh, fall corresponds to lungs. And there's one other element in the five elements, and that is, is earth. And earth is visualized in two ways. One is the center point, the center of this, of this circle. And it's also the, those uh, four points uh, that are between the, the, the cardinal ones. So, you know, it, uh, so there's always in between the uh, water of winter and the, the um, metal of, of or, I mean, the uh, wood of spring, we have, we have earth. So a lot of this gets very complicated and, and I don't wanna get too deep into that. I would like to get really into the, uh, uh, what, what this means in terms of, of, of energy, of tapping into the big chi. So that is when we align with the compass points, there is a different relationship energetically with our environment. That is if we're facing north or facing toward, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're addressing water and kidney and that's, that's a, a different feeling than facing south and, and we're getting into fire and heart. So in terms of your health, aligning with these different points and in your qigong, being able to be aware of your orientation will have a different effect on your, on your, your state of being. And that is, you're tapping into the big chi, but what flavor dominates that conversation? So if I'm facing east as I am right now, I am, I'm a, opening up my liver to that. So, and that's the wood chi. And if we do a little exercise with that, then we can, we can address the, uh, that function, that, that wood function, that wood energy in the system. So, um, Any questions so far? I, I dumped out a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here. Is uh, does that need more explanation, or can we move forward? 
Good, 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 good. Okay. All right, let's move forward then. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to play around with this. And it's going to be a little interesting on Zoom and on YouTube and, uh, and to get to get this. I'm, I haven't quite figured out how this is all going to communicate, but we're, uh, we're going to play around with, um, with two basic forms of standing meditation and, uh, and using them to have a different relationship with the elements that we're talking about here, the elements and the organs. So uh, why don't we stand up and we'll, uh, we'll play around with this. Okay, we're not going to do uh, the directions just yet. We're going to focus primarily on the, uh, the fundamentals of the relationship, both in terms of your body position and your relationship to the direction. So without getting into specific directions. So let's start by uh, establishing our three pillars. So we're, we're going to tap into the big chi this way. So we feel the balls of your feet and just feel your feet just kind of spreading out and sinking down in like you're sinking into, into the sand at the, uh, at the shore. You're kind of moving down. Your knees are, are unlocked and you're sinking into the earth. I'm allowing that yin chi from the earth to rise to the bubbling well points in your feet and enter through your body and out to the top of your head. And you reach for the crown of your head, tuck in the chin and open up the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. So we're lengthening, so we're by reaching up for the crown, we're, we're extending toward the yang chi of the heavens. So that creates a connection there. And we hold these two poles simultaneously, hold them in opposition, reaching up with the head, sinking down through the feet, extending awareness down into the earth. We create a chi flow. The yang chi of the heavens descends, animates your body and exits through your feet. The yin chi of the earth rises up to the crown of your head. You relax your lower back, allow your sacrum to drop and allow your pelvis to level out. Feel your, your lumbar spine getting nice and soft, flattening out a bit. Open up the chest and the shoulders. Feel yourself pulling up from the, the, uh, from the sternum, from the clavicular notch here right at the top of your sternum. There's a sense of Simultaneously expanding yang and sinking yin. And we're going to release the, the hip joints now, just kind of push away from the earth and then spiral down to the left and then spiral down to the right. So you're releasing the hip joints and, and softening that. It really helps if you have your pelvis level as you do that, because that way the, your, the, the joints where your thighs meet your, your hips, they, uh, they can do that smoothly without a lot of, of extraneous muscular tension.
point your index fingers and feel that coherence throughout the body mind. Feel your fingertips and kind of feel the claws there. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulder joints. And we're starting to tap into the big chi now. Hmm. Feel your reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists. Feel your arms coming up, reaching with the wrist, fingers are hanging, very soft, very gentle, reach with the fingers. Reach with the elbows, open the, between your shoulder blades, feel that connection. So feel that yang expansion as you extend and open simultaneously sinking into the earth. So we're maintaining the yin-yang connection. Reach down with the elbows, the wrists. Feel into the yin of this posture. Feel yourself sinking, releasing everything is very sung. Even so, you're still reaching with the crown of your head. So that is the, the yang point. It's primarily yin, the posture. And then reach with your wrists. Feel those fingertips as you do that. Fingers are relaxed, hanging. Reach the elbows. The fingers. Down with your elbows, your wrists, your hands sinking. You feel into the yin, feel into the sung. Feel the wrists, reach for the wrists, reach for the elbows, reach for the fingers. Open between your shoulder blades. Bring your hands closer to your body and kind of lean into your hands as you do that. And as you press down with your hands, feel your body coming up. And you reach out, your body goes back. Very big right now. Hands come up, your body sinks. Hands come in, body goes forward. Hands come down, body rises. Your 
Body goes back, hands come forward. Hands come up, body sinks. A little bit smaller this time. Hands come down. Body comes up, hands reach out, body goes back, smaller still. And we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna reach out, body goes back. Hands come down, body comes up. Hands come in, body goes forward. Hands come up, body sinks. Smaller now. Hands go forward, body goes back. Hands come down, coming up. Body comes forward, hands come in. Now feel that motion without moving. Now reverse it and feel it go the other way without moving. Open, round your arms and feel those two motions without moving. Feel your body here going up and going down simultaneously. Feel yourself expanding and contracting simultaneously. And when we're in this posture and we're doing this, this type of action, the effect is to, to clear away um, what's called turbid chi. That is it, you know, what I would call non-coherent energy. You're allowing it, the, it to settle. It's like muddy water. You know, if you let it stand, you can, it'll eventually particles will drop down to the bottom and clear up the water. So I want to feel that, feel that motion without moving. So we're, the energy is excited and excitable. As your, your, using your mind, you're creating excitement in the energy. And in this posture, you're allowing that movement to clarify your chi. Nice and relaxed. Reach with your elbows, open the shoulder joints. And feel the action happening. So now to fit this in with the idea of the big chi, so we're accessing the big chi right now, but we're going to now direct it. And so right now I'm facing east. And I'm going, we're just going to, you're gonna pretend you're, you're doing that right now. You get to explore and see what directions you're, you know, you're facing. But let's say you, 
This is pretend you're facing east right now. And you can uh, do this at your leisure. So what we want to do here is to feel into your liver. So your liver is on the right side here, sort of at the bottom of your rib cage. Like part of it's it kind of overlaps the bottom of the rib cage. So we're facing east and the liver, we're gonna give the liver agency awareness. It's gonna be a you, that is we're relating to that to your liver as if it's your partner in this in this venture and you're also going to be facing the direction you're going to be facing east and that's also a partner in this direct in this exercise and in this your liver is going to meet it's going to extend to the east, to the wood chi spring, the east, and receive the nourishment of the eastern direction to nourish your liver and clean it. So in this posture, we're allowing the energy to dissipate and the any kind of turbid chi that you might have related to the liver is allowed to just settle out and go down through the bubbling well and out into the earth, disposing of that. The young chi of the heavens is bringing this this white light down through the crown and and illuminating shining light into the into your body mind Rotate your palms. Bring them down. So maintain that relationship with the east, with the direction. Feel that wood chi filling, animating your liver, cleaning, balancing your, your energy. Step in, take a deep breath, and dissipate the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Mm -hmm. 
to the seat, please. Can we turn off the ringer on that? Rick. Well, I had a two lane country road and it just turned into a four lane expressway. <laughs> I mean, both directions, all new concrete, just an incredible rush of energy up one side, down the other, down one side, up the other. Mm. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a nap now. <laughs> just incredible. Keep up the good work. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, any, any questions on, on what we just did there? That it all makes sense that uh... <laughs> I can't argue with results. <laughs> whatever we oh, just yeah. whatever we just did was very strong. Okay. <laughs> it was good. It was when you said sit down, it was like easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. I could feel that um, engagement of the liver. I think it like felt like it doubled in size. In yeah, in size. I, funny enough, you know, I was relating to the east, and the thought was, "You're not facing east. You're not facing east." <laughs> <laughs> so I tried the best I could with that little well. voice. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're able to to quiet the little voice a little bit. So yes, yes, cool. I was. Cool. Uh, but uh, uh, good, good. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, you want some more? <laughs> okay. Let's uh, uh, let's let's do uh, let's do another one. This. Uh, so the, the idea now is we're going to use two directions and this, um, this is based on the idea that, that the adjacent um, uh, seasons and directions feed each other. So in other words, the the water of winter feeds the wood of springtime. So, uh, so we're going to utilize our body to, to access that, that relationship. Hmm. So we're going to take the, take one energy and it's going to nourish the other, um, uh, the other one. In this case, we're going to stick with our liver and still facing east, but the left hand will be reaching toward the north and that will nourish the, the liver chi. So that's, uh, that's, that's the theory. Uh, good with that? Ready to go? Okay, let's do it. Reach with your wrists, your elbows, fingers. Feel those fingernails. 
open between your shoulder blades. And left hand comes down as you spiral down to your right. You're sinking into your right leg. Now sink into you. Pivot out on your left heel. So you're turning your left foot out. And sink into left ball, set the left knee. And as you turn, reach with your left elbow, wrist, fingers. Right hand down below the navel. Reaching with the left hand. The weight on this, you can, you can, whatever makes you comfortable, either 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever works for you. The important thing is you're able to relax and hold that posture for a while. Because we're going to, now we're going to reach toward the north with the left hand. And when I talk about reaching, it's not just pushing a hand out. There's you're extending in order to connect. So that is you're, you're, you're asking the North, the water chi, please help me. Please help the liver. And you're reaching out and making contact in a very loving and respectful way, opening and by extending outward, you're creating this open channel and your body is extending toward the east. Your the front, your torso, your liver is extending toward the east. So here we're nourishing the, the liver by having these two poles. We have the north and the east together. And they're creating this nourishing quality, nourishing chi. And your objective here is you're reaching out, but you're also receiving. You're receiving the energy coming in and feel it through your feet and into the earth, reaching with the crown of your head. Feel your breath. Each breath very deliberate, very mindful. Feel your legs, your feet, feel your hands, feel your elbows, feel your shoulders. And in each of these exercises, all the elements are present, but you can think of it as like 50% is, and in this one, 50% of it is liver or uh, wood, east. 25% is north, water. Kidney. And the others make up the rest, the other 25%. It's just a way of thinking of it. So 
So this is a little more of a dynamic posture. And then we have two poles and we are holding them in opposition, but they're nourishing each other or they, they water is nourishing, the kidney is nourishing the liver. And then bring your hands down. And step in. And just pause in this neutral posture. And feel your chi. Notice also your state of mind, your state of being. Notice your clarity, centeredness. Feel your body sorting itself out. There's a, there's a lot going on inside right now. All that energy is doing the necessary repairs that, uh, that your body has to go through to, to keep moving, keep getting better. And you get to just receive all this, all the big chi. This is doing this work. Now, take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. And by that, I just mean you're discarding any attachment to the energy, to the thought forms, to anything related to that and just allow the nature chi to do its work because you've established the the relationship that permits more activity Please have a seat. You're back, Peter. You know, I'm, I've been here all along. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little faded out, so I, I was just sort of listening to this last part. Good, good. Long day. Well, thank you for uh, sticking with us. Yeah, it's too it's too interesting to leave. Cool. Any questions on this? Or you, you had some thoughts there, Valerina? I have thoughts, not questions. Okay, okay. Give, give us some thoughts. Well, it was very interesting. You know, like you said, you don't know how you, this is proved empirically, other than what one is experiencing in like holding the postures. Um, I did find, you know, with the left hand extended that my body just kind of moved into what I would say was more alignment with east and north. Um, and it was like, you, I found this sweet spot, like, okay, yeah, this is the, this is the distance. This is how we should turn. This is um, and yeah, the, I feel like Rick Myers, <laughs> you know, with the, with the highways of energy, um, that was, it was very cool, very profound. It was very profound. It was very real. It was very large, large and soft. Um, so very cool. Very much like that. Very nice. Much. nice. Peter. 
Yeah, I, I, I got a, I think an insight or an understanding that I really appreciated from the way you talked about reaching tonight. Maybe I'm just a slow learner, but, um, you know, and it's, it, I mean, the issue is a familiar one. It's, you know, to, to make a um, posture or a movement, a, a sort of whole gesture, whole person or whole being gesture. Um, and I had, and I made a connection. I don't, I don't know if it makes sense that when you're say reaching uh, out with your hand, but it's not just a physical movement. It's not just a technical thing. It's, it's sort of with the intention to connect, to meet, to communicate. Uh, then it's natural, like, you know, to do that from your center, from your heart mind, not just, you know, not just from a technical uh, practice mind. Uh, and I put that together with the, the role of the connection to the big chi in, in this practice, that um, reaching, you know, that connecting to the big chi uh, in a sense, it goes together or it empowers uh, reaching in this whole, in this way with all of yourself, this wholehearted uh, gestural gesture of reaching. Uh, not, so, not so limited to the physical movement or even the, the, the intention or the chi in the arm. It's more of a whole being. Uh, Thing. So that I mean, maybe everybody kn knew that all along, but I'm just. Well, I, I think that that needs to be said, Peter, and and needs to be said. Everybody say it in their own way, because it's it's something that it's a deeply personal relationship one has, you know, and and you know we're just finding ways to articulate this that that kind of convey the essence of of what we're talking about there. So, uh, yeah, Rick. Just a, just a quick point, Peter. Doesn't matter whether it's slow or fast as long as there's learning. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jonathan. It's the reaching, because uh, I know you've been studying, you said you were st studying the, you know, the tradition on this. Is the reaching something you're emphasizing, you're adding? Uh, it's, it's my language. Say, it's, it's, language. it's, it's, it's it's, it's there with, um, I'd, I'd say it's um, what I get from Master Yong Fu Kui's teaching. So he doesn't speak of, of it in those exact terms, but in his own way, he, that's what he's communicating to me. I just, you know, my, my job is to, to try to find a common language for all this stuff that is a little more universal and... Uh, so that, that's the language that I'm using to translate the experience that he is sharing with me. Right, I'm just saying, because for me, as you know, I, I keep talking about this. It does so connect to your finger, and because whatever else that is, that's a reach. If, if that, that finger isn't reaching from the very start, it's not doing what you want. It's not act, that's how you're activating the finger. You're reaching even if you're not making a motion. There's a feeling of vector going out which is a receiving, welcoming, like I say, a hugging, but it's, it's that kind of a, the opposite of coming in like this. Right. So it just right. seems, to, I, I love that. It just seems to underlie almost everything you're teaching, love versus fear. It, keeps, it just keeps coming up. You can think of it as like, there is a neutral pole, which is mm. state of wholeness. Mm. And then we have the extension outward, which is the yang impulse, which is the reaching mm. out, then mm. there's the yin impulse, which is the receiving, which is, is the energy coming in. And so returning back to that neutral pole, which is, you know, you know, uh, energetically neutral, but it's, uh, you know, it's a, a very alive neutrality. It's a, uh, yes, it's a it's your, yin, neutrality. your yin receiving, would you not say is, is really about using the elbows? The elbows are kind of reaching in their way, 
it's definitely not a, a yin is not a, a, a shoulder contraction, right? It's, it's so there's a kind of, well, it, it, it can be, both it, ways. But that's, the, 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 any contraction is yin. So, but there's some, some yins are better than others. Do so. we ever want the, the bad yin? <laughs> I mean, we want the good yang and the good yin, right? And they're both, you know, they both I, are both I, reaching. I, I, it's there for a reason. Uh, it, it got built into the system. So uh, yeah, no, it, sure, somebody, sure. one of our ancestors thought it was survival. So, <laughs> <laughs> Valerina. Sure. Well, what I experienced, and thanks for the language, Peter, and for what you just said, Jonathan, and the you know the whole thing of reaching. I sitting here and kind of looking back a little bit. The experience was, yes, I set things in motion by the reaching and that opened the channel for the receiving. And then it became this, what Peter was describing, this whole body, this bigger than, you know, it was just the whole world, right? Um, nice. Or universe or whatever you want to call it. So yes, mm -hmm. that is what I was experiencing. And thank you guys for using the language that. I'm appreciating all of your 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 languagings here. <laughs> there, every everybody's giving it from you know from a different a slightly different perspective, and the words are meaningful because they're your words. And uh, so you know I'm trying to create a universal language, but there's equally important is the language that you uh, you know what means something to you. Now Scott. Well. When I um, reached out to the north and the east at the same time, I felt what it was like to be a capacitor. Oh my God. <laughs> you I have to explain that for the nice people. <laughs> I thought I was going to hit the wall behind me. There was so much energy going back and forth through me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then at the end, I, at the end there, I got some weird pains in my body, which, you know, who knows what that was, but like some real, yeah. real deep, yeah, something's moving in there or something, some real deep, weird pains. But hmm. Yeah, I, I felt stuff moving around too. It's like, you know, you're, you're rearranging the furniture there and, and the, the body says, what's going on here? So it, it definitely has, to, you know, it does, it makes some adjustments and sometimes well, more comfortable than others. Well, but the, well, are, are, your pain, are your pain still there? Or are they gone? Um, they've they've gone away. They've mellowed out, but they're still. I can still feel them, and it's all on the liver side, like mm -hmm. here and here, and who knows? Something's going on in there. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as the you know reaching out and reaching in at the same time thing, I really have to shut my brain off to do that. To, to really experience it because my brain keeps saying no that's not possible that's not possible you can't reach in and out at the same time and as soon as i say just just take a break for a couple minutes while we do this <laughs> then it's like, oh, wow yeah because it's yeah. Such, a, such an experience that we're not we don't ever experience in normal life of reaching in and out at the same time right it requires that super consciousness or eye of spirit to be able to to even perceive something at that at that level it has to go beyond the 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 confines of our rational limitations and be able to tap into something unknowing without thinking to be able to do that yeah rick uh scott you might want to consider replacing that no cop with a yes cop which no cop the one in your brain not, is saying we can't not do possible the not uh, possible well, it's, yeah, it's a yeah, it's not a conscious cop, but I'll, uh, you know, well, <laughs> work on that. He's in your building, Scott. Your building. You can replace him if you want. I'll see about hiring some new security. <laughs> Good one. Get the minions on it. Get the minions on it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay anybody else all right thank you all so much that's great really appreciate it thank you thank you maria thank you maria, thank you, maria. see you next love week love you maria love you guys bye-bye <laughs>